Turn with me to John chapter 1. Verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Please tell your neighbor, full of grace and truth. Let me read again. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Shall we bow our heads down? <coughs> Heavenly Father, <coughs> we come to you because you are a gracious God, full of grace and full of mercy. And truth as well. So this morning we come to you and ask, let your truth be revealed and also your grace minister to our hearts and strengthen us. We give you all the glory. God's people shouted, Amen. See, we are standing by his grace. Please tell your neighbor, you are, you are sitting down here by his grace. See, we all need, we are saved by his grace. So we, I, wanted you to, to, I wanted us to understand how we develop the graciousness in our life. How do we understand that God, he is so gracious? What are the advantages of having this character developed in us? When I come across so many families and marriage problems, difficulties, and people going through, so loving people, even in the world, even in the church life, people miss this attribute of God. Please tell your neighbor this attribute of God. It's very, very important we understand the attribute, the nature, the character of God so we can develop the character of God. What is the point in going to church week after week? The important thing is we every day we get transformed in the very image of Christ. Meetings, more evening meetings and uh, middle week meetings, uh, you know, all this even and so many things we put on in such a way in our journey we developed the attributes of God, the character of God, the nature of this God come into our lives. The see, nature of God comes in there because of two things, hearing the word of God, receiving the ministry in our life, continue to live in the truth, because that's why God is full of truth and grace. We are talking about John 1. You know, we are just around the Christmas. If you already started buying Christmas present, good luck to you and carry on doing it. But this is around the time, but this is not a Christmas message I'm giving you. This is a message what is going to happen in the, in the, in the November and December. People get ready and, uh, you know, Christmas trees and presents and get ready and all those things uh, started happening. But I wanted to tell you the most important thing is the truth and the grace. For just to go into the months of November and October and January and February, we, our life need to be filled with grace and truth of the living God. Shall we shout hallelujah to him? That is the nature of this God. We have to allow this. This don't come automatically. You can become religious. You can be very strict with your husband. You can try to rule over him. The husband can be very nasty and why to the wife and to the family and to the children if we don't cultivate this habit in our life. We don't cultivate. We receive the grace from the Lord and allow it to be developed in our life. It doesn't grow. If we don't cultivate, it doesn't automatically come. We try extra effort. See, when we come to the knowledge of Christ, the saving grace of God, we have to allow this graciousness to be developed in our life. It don't automatically grow, but we receive from God. 
We receive the communion. You know, I talked about the communion, unworthy manner, don't touch the communion. When you receive the communion, when we're beginning to understand what God has done, the sacrifice of his only son for us, uh, he was gracious, God Jesus was so gracious, and we receive the same grace in our life and beginning to develop, allow ourselves to develop with all grace and mercy and truth in our life. See, if you resist the truth, the grace won't be revealed to you. That's why Jesus came. Here, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us in your house, in your life, in your family, in your community. The word became flesh. Well, we built the church. We rebuilt this church and we can be proud of it. You know what happened? The grace of God allow us to have a dwelling place for the Holy One of Israel to manifest His grace to the fallen man and woman in Farnworth in Bolton around this place. Shall we shout hallelujah? The grace of God come into my life so I can be gracious to my children, my wife and my family and, and my husband and wife. You don't become a religious person. Often, often Christians become religious nutters because they don't allow the grace of God to manifest in their life. They become religious nutters. They fall from the grace of God. You know, I find, you know, have you come across the, 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 the phrase, well, she has fallen from the grace of God? Why? Why they fallen from the truth, from the grace of God? Because they didn't allow, they didn't receive the Savior who manifested with full of grace and full of truth. Please tell your neighbor, full of grace and full of truth. See, people, oh, I want to be in the grace. I want to give sort of a grace to others. But if you don't live in the truth of God, the grace won't live with you. The grace and truth go together. You can't separate the grace and truth. Just hear me out. Many people talk about grace, but they never speak about the truth. It is like the two hands of God, the two hands of Jesus, the two hands that was crucified at the Calvary. One hand was grace, another hand was mercy, another hand was truth for you and me. See, many people don't know how to live in the grace because, you know, they reject the truth. They wanted the grace only. I just put this in a different, different format to you, but I want to take the topic, how to live in the grace of God, how to receive the truth, the, the grace of God, it has got two prongs, two sides to it. One side is truth, another side is grace. You know, many people, oh, she's a very gracious person, but is the person living in truth? And I tell you, because, you know, they won't preach the gospel to anybody. They'll be very gracious to. That person is going to hell. The people you come in contact with them are going to hell. Because, you know, what is there? You are full of grace. But there is no truth in you. You are not prepared to challenge. You are not prepared to speak the truth in their life. You are full of grace. You are giving a false hope to the person. When Jesus came, John chapter 1 verse 14 is saying, the word became flesh, made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Church, I tell you, we don't want to build your life with just grace only. It's no good to you. If the grace and truth is built on you, you are a powerful person. Often you heard about, you know, people build churches, Grace Christian Center, and the Grace Christian Center gone after some time. Why it has gone? Because the truth is not preached. Is it true? You know the truth. The truth is the one which sets you free. Grace sustains you every day. When you go through the shadow of the death, it is the grace that protects you. When you go through the pain, the grace come and protect you. But the truth will always remain in you. If you don't have the truth, you don't have the word of God in your life. If you wanted to live in the grace, my friend, that is a false, that is a false hope to the people. The grace is available to you. The grace is available to all the 30, 40,000 people living around our city and our town. You know, this is why we have the bonfire night. This is why we have the conferences. This is why we have the meeting. Because the, 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 the grace is not only for us people come to the church. The grace is available to everybody. But if we don't live in the truth of the living God, we cannot proclaim. Very often I come across a whole lot of people full of grace. But they never talk about the truth. But when Jesus manifested, 
on this earth, he became flesh and he was full of grace and truth. Please tell your neighbor, full of grace and truth. So this is very, very important in our life, how we do. You know, just often we use the word, how gracious. You know, the word grace is how wonderful the person performed. So gracious performance. You know, when Jesus came, he came up with compassion, he came with truth, he came with mercy, he came with power, he came with an elegance. Please tell the with an elegance. He didn't come clumsy, he doesn't fall down on the ice, and you know, sometimes people gracefully dance in the ice. The graciously they dance. You know, how wonderful, how gracious. You know, Jesus didn't slip and fall down. You know, I tried to play on the ice. I went to Blackburn one day. I thought I can skate, but I was falling all over the place. <laughs> Have you tried, anybody? <laughs> yeah, would you I got managed to God. It's a long time ago, not now. <laughs> you know, I see you graciously go. You know, this is how you have to ride. A motorbike or whatever it is, you graciously ride. But if you follow all over the place, you're not graciously riding. Not only that, you fall on others. If you are skating on the ice, if you're not graciously skating, what happened actually? You go and bump into somebody. It's better that you hold the end of it and just walk with your uh, foot like this. <laughs> when Jesus came, he was full of truth. He was graciously, he graciously, he came. You know, Many people fall out of the grace of God. That's what he's got. Because the grace is available to you. You know, whatever the condition, you may be sitting down here, I'm not so holy. But the grace of God is around you. Because you know the truth, you want it to be built in the truth. Jesus would not condemn you because you are reaching to the grace. In the midst of your failure, in the midst of your weaknesses, you are reaching to the grace of God and to the truth. I love Pastor Sam preaching the message because he's very, very strong in his message. But you see, I would not do this job if I'm not telling the truth to you. The truth is the one which builds you, which sustains you. Grace is the one is completely come and decorate you. It's gracious God. Gracious God. He come in grace. But without the truth, you don't have a backbone. If you don't have a backbone, you will be like a jelly. Please tell your neighbor, I'm not a jelly. <laughs> the graciously you can present because you've got a backbone. The backbone is the truth of the living God. The truth of the Savior. When he came, you know, he's spoken with authority. He's spoken with power. He's spoken with wonders and miracles beginning to happen. Because you've flown in the truth. Truth is the book backbone for the grace to manifest. See, without the truth, the grace is a shallow ground. Many people cover, cover so many nonsense with grace. But I tell you, people fall away from the grace. You know why? Because they can't face the truth. The face the truth is, I am a sinner. I've been cheating. I've been taking this communion wrongly. I need to repent before God. Because next day you had the truth, they ran away from the place. I tell you folks, the Bible says, those who've fallen away from the grace of God, you have to be careful how you are dealing with them. You know, I instruct my brothers and sisters, how do you deal with these people who've fallen away from the grace? Because people fallen away from the grace of God, still grace is available to them for them to repent and turn back and come to God. But if they are in a place they don't want to repent, they continue to live in sin, God's anger is against them. This is the truth. This is what is meant by falling away from grace of God. So what happened if there is a group of people standing in a big mountain, rebellious people, want to destroy other people, cut the neck of other people, and there is a bomber that is coming. A bomber flight is coming there, he's going to put her, he's going to press the button, and there is a bomb is going to be released to the people gathered there. If you stood in the place with those people, and the bomb will not spare you. That's why the Bible says, I will not stand in the way of the wicked. You are with those people. If you are with those people, what happens? When God's anger comes in there, you will also be consumed. Church, I tell you, don't play with those people who've fallen away from God, living in sin. If you are in the company, God's anger comes. He will not spare you. Anger will come upon you as well. 
That's why the Bible says you've got nothing to do with immoral brothers. <sighs> Hear me out. Church, how to live in that place with God is full of mercy, full of compassion. It's for those people who repent and turn around to God. So don't be so bold and stand with those people. Don't build fellowship with those people who've fallen away from the grace of God. The God's, God's completely target is fixed on them. See, they don't live in grace because if they live in rebellion, that tomahawk missile is focused upon them. I want to take you a journey to show this God. He's full of grace and full of truth. But if a person fallen away from the things of God, here is a missile just fixed against those people. That's why you should not, the Bible says, do not be associated with immoral brothers. If a person or a brother or sister living in sin and rebellious sin would not hear to anybody, would not hear to the father, would not hear to the father, would not hear to the mother, would not heed to the word of God, would not heed to the pastor, that person is living in a place and the Tamahook missile is focused on them. That's why the Bible says, I'm repeating this one, do not stand with the wicked. Do not stand. You've got nothing to do with the immoral brother or sister. If they continue to live in sin, you are having fellowship with them, you are caught up in the thing. When the missile hit the crowd, if need to go and hit the crowd, it will not isolate you, and you will also perish with those people. That's why the Bible very clearly says, do not be associated with immoral brothers. You see, the, church, the teaching in the Bible, you need to understand clearly, full of grace and full of truth. Please tell me we're full of grace and full of truth. Because they don't have the backbone, they have become like a jelly. When you become like a jelly, you, you can't walk. You can't walk the walk with God. It's full of grace and full of mercy. You know, God's one of these beautiful characters. He flows with grace. He doesn't fall down. You know, he is just effortlessly. See, the, the grace is something, it comes effortlessly. You know, when, when, when I was trying to, trying to walk on this ice, he put on the boots and everything there, but you're just uh, slipping all, all over the place. But if you know how we are doing, he effortlessly. Please tell me about effortlessly. Christian walk is effortlessly you're walking because you've got a backbone. Please tell me, but I got a backbone. Ask the question, do you have the backbone? She asked a bit loud, do you have the backbone? <laughs> the, grace, the grace of God will give you the backbone so you can build the backbone on another people's life. See, the truth is important. Jesus Christ is dying on the cross and he is going to raise up Peter gone back jelly. Because P Peter said, I do not know, because he has lost the backbone. The truth is, Jesus is going towards the cross of Calvary. On the third day, he's going to rise because he's full of grace and truth. Peter, when he denied that one, he became like a jelly. Difficult time, hard time comes in our life. Grace and truth. You want to have the grace? You live in the truth. See, I, nobody can. It would be foolish for me to ask this question, how many of you wanted the grace of God? Everyone, including myself, we need the grace of God. To receive the grace of God, I need to have a backbone. I need to live in the truth. See, many people lie to themselves. They believe in some lies in themselves. God's word are not going to be rewritten. It is already written. It's amen, amen. It is written. Every word, the Bible says, the earth and everything will pass away, but not my word. God's word is not going to pass away. Build, build your life on the truth and grace of God. Please, hear me out. Never, never be associated with immoral brothers. See, immoral brother is more dangerous than people who do not know the truth. You know why? They've fallen away from the grace. Let me tell you an example, the difference between the two. The people do not know Christ. They never received the grace of God. The grace is available to them. They never received the grace of God. The people who've fallen away from the Lord, you know, taken the bread and the wine, unworthy manner, they've fallen away from the grace of God. That's why the Bible says, do not be associated with such people. Because not only they have not received the grace, they received the grace, 
and rejected the grace, you are standing with the wrong people. You would rather you stand with people who are really struggling in their life in sin and something like that, they never received the grace of God. You know, Jesus came for those people, those who know the truth, they have to live in the truth, but if they are living in adultery, if they are living in sin, if they are still in rebellious situation, what has happened? They rejected the work of the cross, they rejected the Jesus Christ, that's what the teaching to the Bible is, do not stand with the, in the way of the wicked, do not be associated with the immoral brothers and sisters. The teaching is very tough there, because God's wrath is against those people. This is why every day we wanted to come together. Every day the early church came together, strengthened one another. When you come for the meetings, when you come for the midweek meetings, morning meeting, we encourage people as the days nearer by never fall out of the grace of God. This, say, this salvation you and I received through the grace we received, we live in the truth. We have to live in the truth to sustain the grace in our life. So you are gliding through in your life. See, often... You know, when you don't, see, the enemy will always try to tell you some lies. See, he is a liar. One of the titles of the devil is a liar. He comes to the believers and tell a lie. Oh, don't bother doing those things. Oh, don't, don't worry, Pastor Sam will preach. That's what he, you know, he wanted to do. That's what he would do. But I tell you, this is the truth. If you know the truth, you seek after the truth, the grace will come and help you. It's not you got every truth completely right. God, I am seeking the truth. I wanted to listen to the word. I want to be in the house group. I want to be in the meeting. I want to listen to the truth because you are seeking after the truth. The grace is running after you. Hello? <laughs> Why I'm saying to people, you need to, come, you need to come bring that person in because you know why? You are running towards the truth. The grace is running behind you. This is how grace works in our life. Grace comes because the truth is going. See, miracles and wonders beginning to happen with the preaching of the word. It doesn't happen suddenly in a place. Because the preaching of the word, there is the truth, there is a grace, and Jesus Christ is moving in a powerful way, and people are hungry and thirsty, manifest the presence of God, beginning to do greater things in people's life. You know, I don't know this morning, I don't know where you are in your life, but actually when you run after God for the truth, seek, the, seek this living God, knock and it shall be found, and he would not fail you. You know, when he comes, when this grace comes, you have a great joy and forgiveness. Jesus arrived on the scene. See, when we read John chapter 1, 14, he arrived in a world where there is so much struggle, so much pain, and so much sorrow. Here came the word of God. The truth of God became flesh. The truth of God became flesh. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among the... This is Christmas. This is Christmas beginning message, I tell you. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one, the only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. He's standing there in the middle of, in the middle of Israel. All the things that he's standing there with full of grace. What is this grace? The grace is willing to forgive completely. See, I tell you, what all the things, the benefit that come out of this grace, out of this grace, salvation come. Please tell your neighbor salvation. Out of this grace come healing. Please tell your neighbor healing. Miracles and wonders. Tell miracles and wonders. And forgiveness to you come. Forgiveness to me comes through this grace. And then... The forgiveness flow through you to others. If you don't receive the forgiveness for yourself, you cannot give the forgiveness to anybody else. Many people stuck in the place. If you are religious, you'll be stuck in this place. Because you know why? You don't receive the forgiveness through the grace of God, so you can't give the grace to others. And, um, and that is the greatest place that we need to come. God, I receive your grace, so I forgive myself for the things I have done. And when you do, you, the harshness out, goes out of you, grace beginning to flow through your life. And also, I wanted to tell you one thing, this grace brings fulfillment of the promises of God. You might have received a lot of promises of God. We talked about the nature of God. He's full of grace and mercies. When we live in the truth, when we receive the grace of God, it brings fulfillment to your promises. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I've been talking about the promises of God. Because when you receive the grace of God, 
you receive the truth also. Please tell your neighbor, you receive the truth also. What happened? Your promises, what God promised to you, beginning to be fulfilled. This is what happens. You wanted grace only to come. Because the grace is really packaged very well with the truth. When it is packaged very well with the truth, when you receive the grace, fulfillment of your promises come. Many people say, oh God, give me the grace. I don't bother about the truth. I don't bother about the truth. Let Pastor Sam preach the truth, but I need the grace, so I'm going to church. But when he's speaking about the truth, uh, he's looked at me, he just, uh, you know, I'm sure he's preaching at me, he just, you know, wanted to, but I tell you, the truth releases you to receive more grace from God. How many of you need more grace of God? Live in the place. Your fulfillment is so close. Fulfillment of your promises is so close if you can live in truth. And the grace will come. Grace will multiply. Where sin multiplied, the grace multiplied. You know, people speak out of context. Grace doesn't multiply. Just like that, because the truth beginning to live in you and the grace beginning to multiply in your life completely. Without the truth, the ingredient is not there. It ful brings fulfillment to the promises. I just want to, you know, also, another thing that's actually people fallen away. I talked about people fallen away from God. Is Pastor Sam harsh with those people who've fallen away from God? Today they're not dead, they're alive, they've fallen away from the grace of God. The grace of God is available to restore them. Shall we shout hallelujah? This is the grace of God. If they, even though they rejected God, they've gone away from the presence of God, though they live in sin, if they repent this moment listening to this message on the internet or listen to this message on the broadcast, if they are prepared to repent and turn around, even though they are fallen away, slide into their own sinful life, if they repent and come back to God, our God is capable of restoring them. Shall we shout hallelujah? It's not that I'm bringing a message of condemnation. I'm bringing in a message of confrontation and also a message of hope and a conviction to you. Even in your backslide and state, if you repent and turn around, the same grace and the truth come and restore you. But you see, there are people and places there. doesn't matter. You live in sin, but just come and sit down in my church. This is not the place. I would have filled all the chairs with those people. <laughs> Hallelujah. I would have filled all those people. I'm a businessman. I know what to do. <laughs> but I tell you, the truth and grace bring salvation. The truth, and, the truth and grace bring healing. The truth and bring restoration to your life. The truth and the grace bring you miracles and wonders in your life. The truth and, the truth and grace bring fulfillment to your promises in your life. What a glorious God we have. What a marvelous God. Let me take you to one or two words to encourage you this morning. This is what the glorious God is. God's character is full of grace. We have to develop the same character in our life. We have to receive from God the grace. Yes, salvation is something we receive His grace. It's not that we have done anything to receive the salvation, to have the salvation. By the grace of God, we have embraced the salvation received from God. And also the grace, when it's allowed to multiply in our life, it brings healing to our life. It brings restoration to our life. Give it to your family. Give it to your husband. Give it to your wife. Receive it from your wife. Give it to your husband. Receive it from your husband. Give it to the children. Truth and grace. Please tell your neighbor, truth and grace. What you receive, receive is truth and grace. What you're passing it on is grace and the truth is powerful substance. The substance of grace is so powerful when it's packed with. I just want you to, I just want you to say, take you to one thing. This is what, you know, Colossians, C-O-L-O, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. This is why our life, when you are developed in our characters, 4, 6, please, verse 6. Not 14, verse 6. Let your conversation, verse 6, yeah, next one. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. Seasoned with salt. Tell them, please. Sir. See, let me stop you there. This is what Paul is writing. Seasoned with salt. The salt is, Jesus said, you are the salt of this earth. You are the truth of this earth. 
If your grace is not seasoned with salt, you are not giving the grace that flow from the things of throne room of God. Let your conversation always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You know, 2,000 children came to this church here from the local school. Many of you were there. Some of the leaders were with me. Every children, they would be thrown the question back to them. Now it's a question and answer time. Children asking various questions. We have to tell the truth. We have to, how do we do this one? We are the salt of this earth. Please tell your neighbor, you are the salt of this earth. If your life is not seasoned with truth, what you say, you may say it is a gracious thing, I'm talking with them, it doesn't produce the result. Oh, I've been telling the gospel, nobody wanted to follow me, nobody wanted to come. Because you know why, if it is not seasoned with salt, that's why in the table there is a salt there. You know, we receive the salt and add some more salt. So I cooked a nice food on Friday, and Kiran is sitting there and adding more salt to the food. Because it needed a bit more salt. Nothing wrong with the food. Without the salt, it doesn't bring in. A truth brings least to people from powers of darkness. Truth seems harder, but truth is the one. You know the truth, the truth shall set you free. You are the salt of this earth. So the salt is salt in our life. First of all, we must apply the salt to our own life. If we don't apply the salt to our own life, it becomes a message without any truth in it. Whatever we say in people's life don't work. Apply the salt to your own life, live in the truth, and then you're beginning to do marvelous things in people's life. You know, it brings fulfillment of the promises of God. The grace and truth, when it is living inside you, it brings fulfillment to the promise of God. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1, please. Can you put it on the screen for me, please? Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. This is in the Old Testament. Andrew, can you come and read that for me, please? Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Can you, can you, thank you, Andrew. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he promised. See, many people in this church today have got a lot of promises in your life. The promises is not fulfilled. And I was just waiting upon the Lord. God, give me. Give me your insight so I can teach your people, I can preach your word. When you receive, Sarah received a promise. But the fulfillment has come now because the Lord was gracious to Sarah. See, when, you, when we are in the lowest state, in a very difficult time, God given you a promise to you. To, to receive the fulfillment, this is what I said. We need to be in a place. We are ready to receive the grace and the truth from God. God is about to, please tell me, but God is about to bring fulfillment to the promise he given you. Please minister to one another. The fulfillment of the promise don't come to you unless you receive the gracious presence of God in your life. Promise happened long time ago. Am I living in the wilderness? Many Christians do live in the wilderness. They die in the wilderness. And I feel very sad for them. The reason is this, receive the grace of God, it come with another thing, with the truth. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he said, the Lord did what Sarah, what he promised. See, God want to do in your life, receive the grace of God. Receive the grace of God this morning. Oh, grace of God, I am ready to receive it. It's not repentance, I'm ready to receive the grace of God. It has come with the other side. Just like the note I showed you the other day, one side is queen's face is there. Other side, there is something else is written on this side. The two come together. You want a fulfillment of any of your promises, your children, your grandchildren, your marriage, your future, your finances. I, I, I wish I could take people and put them that in the place. I, I long to do that, one, but I can't. You have to walk this walk in the place. When it's a fulfillment of time, the grace is being shown to Sarah. Fulfillment of your promises come. When you, 
when you receive, I said, God, you know, God was revealing this to me. I said, just revealing. And I, I've not been to Bible college. I've not gone to, you know, very theological institute. But the revelation of God was so beautiful. I thought, God, you know, this is how it happens, the promises. The promises, fulfillment come because you seek after the truth. You know, God, you know, many people, many people go unnecessarily lose their life, lose everything in their life because they don't want to live in the truth. But they, you see, if Pastor Sam wanted to pray for a grace, oh, I wanted that grace, it's okay. But this thing, two things live together. Your promises, you shall become the head and not become the tail. You and your family will be saved and you will come into the full knowledge of God. All the things will be prosperous and you will become, you know, you will be a channel of blessing. All these promises there. But I am not standing in the grace of God. All the promises to Sarah to fulfill, there need to be an ingredient. Bonfire night, we got all the ingredient there. And, uh, you know, our, our boys are going to set up this firework in a controlled way. We are going to enjoy. But you know what they do? They just take the firework, set up there. Rocket is going to go up and all the beautiful things are going to happen. But it is there. Nothing will happen to it. If you leave there for more in a cold weather, it will not even go anywhere. But they just walk closely and lit the fire, keep her distance. Listen, you know what it is? The fire is needed for the display to come. It's an ingredient, the grace is ingredients in your life to see the fulfillment of the promise. Everybody look up on the sky, but there is an ingredient added that is the fire. The fire touched the, you know, the, 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 the starting point and immediately this rocket goes up and a beautiful display happened for five minutes or three minutes. Grace need to touch your life for the fulfillment of your promises. Religion told you so many stuff in your life. And you go to that church and go here, go there, give everything. You are fooled. The truth will set you free. You know the truth and the truth will set you free. This grace is added to my life. Fulfillment of the promises is coming. You know, I don't know what is your promises. Your child back, your marriage back, your finance back, your health back. It's very simple. Add the ingredient, grace and the truth in your life. See, often people find, oh, no, don't go nearer to uh, Pastor Sam or somebody who speaks the truth. Because you know why? There is a grace and the truth that is flowing. I will never preach grace alone without preaching the truth. Because it can mislead you completely. Because Jesus did not appear. Jesus in the John 3, you know, when we, when we read this chapter, John 1, 17 or whatever we read this morning, when Jesus appeared, he was full of grace and full of truth. That is the way son of man, that is where the gospel is supposed to be preached with grace and with power and with truth. This morning, Sarah, God said the blessing to Sarah. The Lord did Sarah what he promised. Grace brings your promises to fulfillment. Please tell your neighbor, grace bring fulfillment to your promises. It's a wonderful God in our life. Isaac is born. Isaac is born because the beautiful picture is unfolding. Isaac is born and the blessings of God beginning to unfold because grace is added. Grace and the truth. When you say grace, Please remember, grace always comes with truth. This is what is not thought very clearly, understood. Understand this very clearly. See, grace, what happened actually? Grace always flows to others. Grace, always, grace never gets stuck up with your life. Grace never. Grace is the one that brings salvation to others. You can call it a discipling or whatever it is in your life. I can re-bottle it in a way. Grace flows because the truth and the grace is with you and that always flow to others. Flow to the people in circumstances, in difficulty. It brings salvation to others and bring healing to others. Uh, and let me tell you one thing. Genesis chapter 33, verse 11. <clears throat> it, how it flows. It flows through you in the form of gift, in the form of many things. It flows out of your life. Grace is never held for yourself. Grace flow through your life. Genesis chapter 33, verse 11. Please accept this presence that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need 
And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted. After many, many years of separation, two brothers are meeting here. I mean, if you know the Bible very well, you understand the concept, otherwise read the Bible. Genesis chapter 33, two brothers are coming to meet. After a very long time, fear and so many things gripped Jacob's heart. At this point, he is just coming to meet his brother. He's ready to meet his brother, and he is coming, and God has been so gracious to me. Jacob was tremendously blessed. See, your blessing comes because of God's grace. See, your blessing comes because of God's grace on your life, because you have the truth, and you have the, you have the God's grace also with that one. When you allow that one, God multiplied and blessed him. Now he meeting Yusu, he wanted to give all this gift to Esau. I don't think Esau was blessed as much as Jacob was blessed, but he wanted to give the gift to Esau, and what he's saying is, God has been gracious to me. Testimony, your testimony come. <coughs> you have a testimony, your testimony come out of receiving the grace of God. <coughs> you know, many people wanted to say so many things. You know, many people wanted to say so many things. And I'm not one of those persons interested in hearing all sorts of nonsense from people. When I wanted to hear the good thing, if they share with me, ah, that is flowing out of grace of God. I knew exactly what is flowing through them. Because when you receive the grace, what is happening, this is exactly what is happening. Accept this presence that was brought to you, for God has been gracious to me. It beginning to flow out of your life, Grace never gets stuck with you. Please tell me, grace never gets stuck with you. Grace is beginning to flow. <clears throat> God has been so gracious to me, so I am blessed. Now I want to pass on the blessing completely. Give the blessings to you. Because it's <clears throat> Jacob know how this God blessed him. With Laban, how he blessed him. How in the walk God blessed him. Grace brings blessing to your life. Please tell me, grace brings blessing to your life. <clears throat> now, I just want to tell you one or two things. I want to finish as quick as possible, if need be, ministering to some people. You see, <clears throat> grace, what he does, grace, you see, how do you come out of poverty trap? There's a famine. <clears throat> there is a problem, difficulties. People go through in a circle again and again, three weeks there, fourth week they disappear, fifth week they come, fifth week, I'm sorry, pastor, I was this, and fifth week they come. You know why? They have not broken this cycle of poverty and the enemy's action and enter with the truth and the grace. If the grace is given, oh, I needed the grace, I needed the grace. But if you want the grace, you have to accept the truth also. When you accept the grace, the, grace, the, the cycle completely broken in your life. Please tell your neighbor, the cycle in your life needs to be broken. Whatever the cycle you are going through, God is this morning, I'm ministering to you to break the cycle in your life, that cycle, what the enemy wanted to operate in your life, if that cycle is broken, you enter into a place, a different place with God. See, your situation completely broken. That cycle is broken. Your hard work, you try to find no result, nothing. All the effort you are taking, come to nothing. What I am living in for? I am not going to walk in the desert anymore. My cycle needs to be broken. Please tell me about my cycle needs to be broken. <clears throat> not your cycle, other cycle I'm talking about. <laughs> not your motorcycle also, but it is a cycle. The enemy wanted to operate in your life. And I see a pattern in their life. Because you know why? They are so gracious people, but they are so loving people. But you know why? They have never accepted the truth in their life. The truth comes with grace. Very gracious, they would give anything to anybody, walk in the way. The truth and the grace come together. When you receive that one, breakthrough comes in their life. Poverty is broken. Let me take you to a Bible chapter and explain to you what happened here in this place. Uh, Genesis chapter 43, verse 29. <clears throat> Get it on the screen for me, please. Uh, see, the grace is, when it is flowing, it breaks. Allow, allow it to flow in your life. Immediately, poverty is broken. Here, 43, 29 is a, is a junction point. Israel, the whole Israel is in poverty. You know, there is no rain, nothing. <clears throat> and, uh, and they are in deep trouble. But Joseph is in charge of Egypt. And he has got all the blessing. He's in charge of all the blessing. 
because he walked in the truth and the grace of God, where Joseph is, Joseph is ruling, and there is full of everything, grace, and because Joseph is in the place, and there is no poverty, and there is blessing. Now you know the story. Joseph is in Egypt, and his brothers are coming. That is the place where we are talking about. His brothers are coming to see father send them to go and find out in Egypt there is plenty. Go and receive the corn or whatever it is received from there. Now they brought, the, again they went for backwards and they brought ben Benjamin before jo Jake, uh, Joseph. Joseph is on the throne and uh, Benjamin is standing before him. Benjamin do not know this is my brother who is in charge of the whole of Egypt. He is the king after the king. He is in charge. He is the number one in the, in the, in the city, in the town. And Benjamin was so afraid and standing there. But Joseph knew very well who is standing in front of me is my brother. <clears throat> my brother is standing in front of me. But he is overwhelmed. Jo Joseph is completely overwhelmed with emotion. My brothers are standing here, but they are standing in poverty. They are standing in trouble. My father and family is living in poverty, but I am living in prosperity. Hello? Do you hear me what I'm trying to say? Because grace and truth is resting upon one person, lie and deception is resting upon all the brothers there. Because they have almost murdered him, sold him to Potiphar, and he has gone there, but God transformed. Even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, but the truth and the grace will bring you to the throne room. Shall we shout hallelujah? I'm preaching some good stuff, I tell you, but just to keep it with yourself. Live in that place. The truth and the grace will bring you to a place of prosperity, bring you to a place of fulfillment of the promises of God, bring you to a place of amazing grace. Amazing grace. And all those things beginning to work in our life. Now, Benjamin, he looked at Benjamin, he's filled with emotion. Is this, you know, he's saying, and he looked, Joseph looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, asked him, is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. You know, he's releasing the grace. Joseph in a position to release the grace. God wants you to be in a position to release the grace. Please tell your neighbor, God wants you to be in a position to release the grace. God wants the church to be in a place to release the grace to others. Why I'm preaching this to the church? Because God, God wants you to be in a position to release the grace to your brothers and sisters, to the family who are living in sin and deception. Maybe God will release the truth and the blessing upon their life. Because when you receive the grace of God, when you live in the grace of God, you can release the grace to others because it is packed with truth. It sets the people free. His own family, his own brothers. You are your brother's keepers. Please tell anybody, you are your brother's keepers. <laughs> Don't live with them. Stand in a place, stand like a sore thumb. Doesn't matter. People may not accept you. People wanted to clone you into their own version of you. But stand. Stand for the truth and the grace in your life. The grace will flow through your life to the people in poverty and bondage. Almost death trying to get hold of the house of Jacob. But what is happening here? Joseph is releasing the, the grace and the truth. And he's saying, God be gracious to you, my son. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited as I'm thinking. Because the church, you are the Joseph. Please tell your neighbor, you are the Joseph. You are the Joseph. You are not standing or sitting down in Pastor Sam's church or this church to be an ordinary person. God wants you to be Joseph in such a way you can release the grace to the people in poverty. That grace brings prosperity to the town, prosperity to the city, freedom to the people, break the cycle. You know, people run the cycle. You know, I mean, in a, in a village in India, I mean, some of you might know what I'm trying to talk about it, really. Children take a cycle wheel and just to run behind the cycle wheel. You know, children play. In Africa and Asia, they do. I don't know, you remember. 
You know, they take one of the cycle wheel and make the cycle wheel is running and they run after. I also played like that when I was young. But when I grown up, I began to ride the cycle. I've broken several cycles though. <laughs> but then I'm beginning to ride motorcycle, which is going in power. But when I was a baby, I was playing with the wheel that is going, and I sent the wheel rolling in front, made sure it is riding okay. Don't ride like that. It's a time come. You need to sit on the driving seat. The cycle will follow in front of you. God is in the business of breaking the cycle because God wants to promote you to another level. Joseph is sitting on the seat here, and he's saying the word, God be gracious to you, my son. Benjamin, be blessed. Own flesh and blood. Our own town, our own cities, people in bondage, people in pain, and people in sorrow. Are you going to be a Joseph? Are you going to be a Joseph? The challenge for the church is, are you going to be a Joseph? If you are going to be a Joseph, my Redeemer lives, and he given me a dream, he given me a promise, and I am living in the promises. You know what is happening? The grace and mercy sustain you. You go through the pits, you go on top of the camel, you go into the prison, but the truth, which is filled with grace, never leaves you. I will never leave you, never forsake you. Turn around. See, I'm, you are going through some difficult, but still I am Joseph. Please tell you, never still I am Joseph. Shall we stand before the living God? My message will go for another three days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Church, I tell you, is not going to a church and going back. God wants you to be. God wants you to be Joseph. Church, God wants you to be Joseph. I'm not talking about you, you know, wherever you would not have come to the place if you're not seeking the truth. But you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It's not you are there, the world is in poverty, your family is in poverty, spiritual poverty, people around you are darkness, they do not know. If you don't know who you are, you're never going to touch, you're never going to, what you are living in, or you have to live in the place of the gracious. Grace can flow through your life. The truth can flow through your life. Because two things, he know the Lord God given me a promises. God remembered Sarah. He came nearer to Sarah, and she's about to fulfill the promises he's given. God given a dream to Joseph. The Joseph dream is being fulfilled. Brothers and sisters standing before. That is a dream he had long time ago. The sun and the moon and all the stars bow before him. God's grace want to rest upon you. God's truth want to rest upon you. Don't fool your mother. Don't fool your father. Don't fool your wife. Don't fool your husband. Don't fool even the pastor. Live in the truth and in the grace. When you live in that place, amazing God, the grace beginning to flow. I am a Joseph called to be. You are a Joseph called to be. Don't stand with immoral brothers. Don't associate. The Bible says, don't even associate with immoral brothers. That they should be shamed. They will return to the grace of God. It's not by your presence there. They are going to return to God. The grace is available to them. Even to the fallen men and women of God. Fallen away from the grace. But the grace is available to them. Not for you to stand with them. You have to make them completely ashamed of their life. Not to be associated with them. But the grace of God if they can look to. The snake that is lifted on the pole, if they look to the snake that is lifted on the pole, the snake that is clinging on to them will fall down. Don't be associated with immoral people. Set your apart. I am holy. Be holy. God wants to be a Joseph. Hallelujah. All is closed in this place, please. What a marvelous God. The grace is available. This is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of truth and power. The truth come and the grace come to you. The fulfillment come to you. The truth come. The grace comes. How magnificent. How wonderfully. How graciously. Jesus Christ came. Jesus came, came with full of truth. And full of grace. When he comes into your life. I tell you. 
full of grace and full of truth and authority. When you speak the truth, you have the authority. Authority comes because the throne room is rejoicing in you. You know, authority come to Joseph because he carried the authority and the truth. Folks, I tell you, I just, I just shake up so many people's life for the reason you, I want you to live in that place. I want to be a Joseph to your family. I want to be a Joseph to your daughter. I want to be a Joseph to your children. I want to be a Joseph to the community because you live in truth and you live in power. You live in grace. That's what you're called to be. You're not called to be a king in Egypt or somewhere in Egypt, but God wants you to fulfill Turn the poverty, turn the morning into dancing as we sang this morning. Turn the morning into dancing. Turn those people's sorrow into a joy. How do you do this one? Because I am a Joseph. Hallelujah. All eyes closed in this place, please. All eyes closed.